The defense seems to be almost through their case in chief on day four at the lunch break of Florida versus Sarah Boone. They called a number of witnesses this morning, lots of law enforcement witnesses to quickly go through corroboration of Sarah Boone's reports of prior contacts with law enforcement and law enforcement coming out when there had been calls relating to domestic violence. Law enforcement corroborated the things that she said in her testimony. When they came out with the incident where she had the black eye from being kicked, they corroborated that when they came out, she had injury to her face and reported that she was kicked and said that she fucking fought back. That's what she said in her testimony yesterday. We also saw Sarah Boone corroborated with other law enforcement, and we saw the defense eliciting that on some of those instances, she had also been arrested and got out ahead of that, but we knew that. Then they called a forensic psychologist who did not evaluate Sarah Boone to talk about battered person syndrome in general, to talk about intimate partner violence in general. And I think that was maybe the state's best cross-examination so far. The state used that witness to explain things like narcissistic personality disorder, alcohol abuse disorder, and other disorders. And they used this witness to go through what a thorough and complete evaluation for a trauma-based disorder would look like. I wonder if when we get to the defense's other expert that did evaluate Sarah Boone this afternoon, if we're going to see that some of the things the prosecution was asking about are because they were not done by the defense's expert. They said you need more than just bringing in a self-report from the individual. They also talked a bit about perception management, and it was interesting that we got to that conversation in all of this because honestly, some of the things that the prosecution brought up, you're sitting there going, yep, yep, that's exactly what we saw in Sarah Boone's interview. And I think that's probably what the jury was nodding along thinking too. This is a complex case. There is a lot going on with clinical psychologists and forensic psychologists. We will see what they evaluated Sarah Boone and or diagnosed her with and or did not diagnose her with when we get back after the lunch break. Now you brought up veterans. Is something common with PTSD with veterans? Something like firecrackers may set them off because it re reminds them of acts of war. That's right. You're not suggesting to the jury today that if somebody who returns with PTSD from service and hears firecrackers is justified in going outside and just shooting bullets everywhere, correct? No, it's not what I said. I'm, I'm not saying you did. <laughs> okay. Even though I take issue with counsel's analogy, I appreciate that he is now asking just because one might have a PTSD response does not make it okay. So we're going to get into the heart really of this cross-examination and see if it lands. He's actually asking for but, a legal but conclusion. This but battered spouse syndrome evidence is helpful for is not that subjective uh, mindset, but rather helping to explain the objective circumstances that are presented to somebody and how it might be different from somebody with those experiences. They may view something objectively different. I, I partially disagree with your question because I, I would say that there are incidents or actual events between partners that would be a, a factual thing, something has happened. And then the person subjectively experiences that as, um, you know, intrusive or controlling or traumatic. So that is the person's felt or subjective experience. The objective part is what happened. But again, as a forensic psychologist, you're familiar with the justified use of force instruction, correct? I'm not a lawyer, though, so I am aware of it, but I cannot debate fine points of that with she just said objection calls for legal conclusion in expert witness. Thank you, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just help, helping, I'm trying to understand what you said before, because there is a subjective component, whether or not a person believes subjectively that they need to use some sort of force, deadly or non-deadly. You agree with that, correct? I do. And then there's also a second component that it's objectively reasonable to the ordinary person to use force, correct? I understand what you're saying, yes. And what I believe I heard you mention earlier about battered spouse syndrome was originally was meant to help understand why people stay in these relationships. Originally, yes. Because it may not just be intuitive to somebody who doesn't understand these things 
why somebody who is abused time and time and time again would remain in that relationship, correct? That's right. And again, and I know you're not a lawyer, um, but if the law has evolved about retreat and not having to retreat and so on and so forth, that kind of changes some of the lens of this, correct? Judge, I'm going to object. Approach. That is getting very Just, uh, close. Question withdrawn. Let me proceed. To calling for a legal conclusion. I'm not right. surprised it was withdrawn. Remember, the prosecutor was our objecting when the defense was trying to get into this jury instruction and ask specifically. So I'm not surprised the defense is doing the same. At the end of day four of Florida versus Sarah Boone, Sarah Boone's defense team is just about to rest their case. It looks like one last thing that they want to do is have the court take judicial notice of two stay away orders or no contact orders issued to George Torres in 2019. There were two misdemeanor cases and those orders were issued at the same time. There was some fighting on the record about it. And at the end of the day, the government acquiesced, even though they had objected. And it looked like the court was going to grant that objection, but it was going to come back around another way anyway. So they acquiesced because it's going to come up, it seems, on the body cam footage that the state is going to play tomorrow in day five of trial when they get into the rebuttal case. The state said that they've got about two hours of video from both the body cam of officers who responded to incidents with Sarah Boone and George Torres, and they've got other video from the phone that they want to show. I'm interested to see what that is. The state also said they will be spending at least an hour going through text messages. They made no mention of calling Brian Boone back to the stand. We will see if they do or if they don't. But the text messages on the phone, I am interested to see what they are going to be highlighting for the jury as they get to the end of it. And then it looks like we will be getting to closing arguments on Friday after they decide jury instructions late in the day on Thursday. And then the jury will have this case to deliberate. They will be deliberating on second degree murder. They will be getting self-defense instructions. I think the charging conversation over those jury instructions is going to focus mostly on that self-defense instruction, how that self-defense instruction will be given and what it will say because that is critical to the defense case then we will probably see the lesser included of manslaughter unless the defense argues against it, which I can't imagine they will because they argued essentially that the second degree should be dismissed when they argued for a judgment of acquittal. And they argued we should allow the manslaughter to go forward, the lesser included, but not the second degree murder. So I think they will be looking for that manslaughter instruction as well as a lesser included crime. No, she's not charged with both. Yes, she's just charged with second degree murder, but the lesser included crime can be given at the time that the jury is charged and sent back to deliberate. And I think that's what's going to happen for the defense today. They brought in two doctors, one who did evaluate Sarah Boone, one who did not, who was more of just a foundational expert to lay the ground for what is battered spouse? Where does that fall? What does that look like? And explain that to the jury. We also saw a lot of the law enforcement officers that responded to instances or incidents between Sarah Boone and George Torres at their apartment. So with all of that, we're almost done with this trial. I don't think the jury will be out that long, but we'll have to see. I'm interested to see how the jury instructions come in. And I'm very interested to see what else comes in in the uh, rebuttal case. So keeping an open mind, what's going to happen in the government's rebuttal? What other videos will they show and what else will be shown? It seemed from today, the state saved most of their cross-examination of Sarah Boone for cross-examination of Sarah Boone's expert and really started dialing into the expert on things that I would have thought they would have crossed Sarah Boone on, including, well, she said this, but then she said this, she said this, and then she said this. So maybe that was the strategy to go after the expert who was talking about Sarah Boone's statements to her about the case versus going round and round and round and round and round with Sarah Boone on the stand. For deep dives into the stories that I covered here, you can find them on my YouTube channel at The Emily D. Baker and The Emily Show Podcast. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. The podcast goes live on Wednesdays. And if you want to stay in the loop with everything I'm doing, receive the fastest notifications out there and get more Law Nerd community, join me at lawnerdapp.com, our free app for iOS and Android.